Classic Restos is proudly brought to you by Shannon's, where you can sign up to be a member of the Shannon's Club, your local Holden Certified Service Centre, Pace Farm the Enjoyable Egg, and Heron Forbes Machinery House, where you can buy online. G'day, I'm Fletch and welcome as I bring you to Clarendon, New South Wales. Now if you're into trucks, you're going to love this. There's just something about a Kenworth and you're about to see some in this week's Classic Restos on the road. <laughs> This is the Kenworth Classic, the Big Daddy, the grand final, if you will, where the most popular collection of Kenworths can be found in one location each and every year. Well, it's no surprise, it's organised by Bruce Gunter, the same guy that organises Hall and the Hume. It's just a fantastic opportunity for everyone to catch up and talk trucks. Yep, and whatever else, there's probably more BS here this weekend than if the paddock was full of cattle. Talk about a bunch of characters. These guys, along with their trucks, are the classics. Salt of the earth people, first to do anything for you, and in most cases, have helped to carry this nation. Kenworth Classic is a celebration. The camaraderie here this weekend over three days is as strong as you'll find. The Kenworth goes down as a world's best. It's a truck brand that's loved. Hands up, who used to draw Kenworth trucks back in high school, eh? Hey? Kenworth started in Seattle, Washington back in 1912. And just quickly, brothers George T and Lewis Gerlinger operated a car and truck dealership known as Gerlinger Motor Car Works. In 1914, they built their own design truck with a steel cab, not American timber. It had six cylinders, not four, going down as a fairly tough truck for the time, proving ideal for logging in the rugged northwest. The truck was aptly named a Gersex. In 1933, Kenworth became the first American company to make diesel engines stand in their trucks instead of petrol and introduced a sleeper cab option. By the time 1935 came around, Kenworth engineers were responsible for aluminium hubs, state-of-the-art cabs and torsion bar rear suspensions. Hydraulic brakes were introduced, obviously pre-air, and by 1940, almost 250 Kenworth trucks had been built. The years roll on, and time for our Australian connection, with the first Kenworths arriving in Australia in 1962, imported by the late Ed Cameron. Thanks to Mr Cameron, by 1967, around 100 Kenworths were running on Australia's highways. Because of this incredible initiative and success, Packard purchased the distribution rights from Ed and local assembly of Kenworths started in 1970 in Bayswater, Victoria. The Packard factory in Bayswater turns out over 2,000 Kenworths and around 500 DAF trucks every year, recently celebrating their 70,000th Kenworth truck. First truck out of the warehouse, Clarendon 2022. It's a Kenworth show, but hey, this truck here, it's allowed to be a Peterbilt. How are you, Scott? Yeah, good, thanks, Fletch. How are you? Good, thank you, mate. We're starting the show with a customised truck, 1967, done yep. to perfection, Scott. You're running a 3408 Cat V8 in the big girl. This is a tremendous bit of gear here. What can you tell us about it? Mate, we bought the truck 15 years or 18 years ago now, and bought it as a bit of a project. Um, as usual, come from the States, left-hand drive, 290 Cummins, day cab, single drive. When we got it home, it was nothing what we thought it was. Everything was damaged. The A-pillars were bent, nothing. Ah. It was a typical bloody picture, you know, so we had to can it all and start yeah. again with the whole thing. Yeah. And start as a hobby, yeah. just a bit here, a bit there. Yeah. And so we changed everything. Yeah. And my love V8, so I had to have a cat. Totally agree. And having spent a lot of time in the United States of America too, Scott, and uh, spending a lot of time on the freeways of the US um, and the way the boys over there with their Peterbilts sit them down nice and low, uh, stainless steel, eyebrows over the windscreens, just yep. the, the way they set them up. Even, even their, um, 
CB antennas sitting at a 45 degree angle yep. forward. Yep. So when they do their 60 or 70 mile an hour, they're straight. Yep. All these little uh, attention to detail things, these guys drive their trucks, they're in them all day. It's like an extension of their houses yep. and they've got to get them right. What you've done here with the customization of this 1967 Peterbilt is fantastic. Down to the vinyl with the press studs on the panels to protect from stone chips. Yep. Um, the suicide doors here on the yep. cab as well. Um, it's outstanding, Scott. Yeah, no, thank you. Like I said, it was um, my whole family's been involved. The whole family done it all bit by bit. Yep. Now the drive line on this truck is interesting. Now back in the day, the well, the 100 mile an hour diff, the 160 kilometer an hour diff back in the day being around a 3.9 ratio. Mm. What have you got running in the back here? This has got 3.7s. 3.7s. 3.7s for fuel economy, of course. <laughs> yeah. You want to try and get the, keep your revs down so you yeah. get good fuel. And it wouldn't be that much slower off the line because of the torque you'd have in the front here. Yeah, like. not bad torque, but also because it's, it's running through an 18 double overdrive gearbox. Yeah. So, so it gives you a good range. So at the state speed limit, what sort of RPMs are you doing? Yeah, you'd be doing around the 1,300. Wow. For, for yeah. 100 k's. Yeah, yeah, there you go. There you go. Well, Close enough. you're going to get at least a million k's out of your engine. Yeah, well, yeah. Well, that's the thing. Yeah, you know, that's the thing. Like a lower RPM, you know, the thing's going to be working a little bit less, isn't it? And you've yeah. got that torque yeah. up front, as we just said. Yeah, so. just idling around. Yeah. Now you've got another Kenworth at home. It's done way over a million k's, right? Yeah, yeah. It's got two and a half million k's just on that engine. On the original engine. Yep. Same yeah. ratios. Same. Yeah. Everything. Yeah. Same. There's a lot to be said for taller gearing. Oh, look, it is. It's, and. You know, back in the day, like you said, you did it to get to where you had to go quicker. Okay, now we look at the stainless steel and the bling bling, the bright work on the truck. Um, no expense spared here, Scott. Even the tail shaft has a cover. Um, it looks sensational from every angle. Now, this is still a, a working truck? Yes, yep. How incredible is that? We've got a customised truck here, it's a show truck, but yet it still it still goes to work. They're all got to work. They've <laughs> got to earn the keep. Yeah, yeah. And they don't like, you know yourself, with old vehicles, they sit around and they start getting problems. Yeah, true, true. So, and I build it to work, I build it, and yep. I enjoy it. Scott, wonderful catching up with you. Even uh, the interior of the truck here, we have a look inside there, shiny floor, you wouldn't want to get in there with muddy boots on, don't want to put any scratches in there. Um, gear stick, check that out. The seats look fantastic, the dash, it's, uh, well there's no other truck in the world like this and that's the, the whole idea of customising. Yeah, it is. It's, uh, it's your own special, so yeah. uh, good on you Scott. Thank you mate. You're welcome. Thank you, appreciate che it. Cheers mate. Ta. I've been a motoring enthusiast all my life. My Coupe 4 is rare and very special. A real performance car with all-wheel drive grip. I'm not a car club bloke and I don't work on it myself, but I do have a great mechanic. One day, I might even get that HQ. When it comes to insurance, it's got to be Shannon's. Shannon shares your passion. Call Shannon's on 13 46 46. Shannon's, insurance for motoring enthusiasts. When it comes to cars, there are some brands that will remain with us forever, no matter what. The Holden was always Australia's own car, held high in the hearts of many. Those lines, that chrome, the stories around them and the people that owned them. From the classic through to the final, you can still trust in genuine Holden and AC Delco parts. Available through the Holden Certified Service Network. Welcome back. How are you, Scott? Yeah, good, Fletch. How are you going today? Good, mate. Are you having fun here? I always have a fun ball this place to come to. This is the Kenworth Classic here at Clarendon, New South Wales. And there's no doubt about it, Bruce Gunter and a very small team do an incredible job here every year, don't they? I do an amazing job. It's a credit to them what they do, mm. the effort they put in. Well, I can't believe, too, this is an interesting ratio. Around about, oh, around the 400 truck mark are here for the weekend. It's over three days, Friday, Saturday and Sunday. This is, this is Sunday, the last day, and we've still got a huge attendance here, even for this time of the day. Um, around 75% of the trucks here are working trucks, so yep. tomorrow a lot of these trucks will be back on the road. Yep, or tonight, this afternoon, and air him do it. Yeah, so a lot of the guys will be dropping the oil and doing the filters next weekend because they wouldn't have had a chance this weekend. No, no, that's <laughs> it. Unless you're like me, have four days off before and get ready to prepare and Isn't that good? calm down. 
but then it rained coming down, so yeah. we had to rewash them when we got down here. This is what uh, I've always had a passion uh, for, for trucks and uh, getting to know the fraternity over this last 15, 18 years, or 15 years primarily, I guess, with classic restos, um, how close the camaraderie is uh, for all you guys to come off the road, be here for three days, so many operators, uh, big companies as well, lots of uh, big fleet names are here. Yep. They choose this show to yeah. take their trucks off the road and be here for. That's it. That's and I it. just think that's amazing. Oh, yeah. Yep. We've got a situation here where a driver of this beautiful 1984 Kenworth uh, passed away behind the wheel while driving the truck. Scott inherited the truck from the driver's family. So, it doesn't take much to work out what this truck means to Scott. It's got incredible meaning. Uh, it's beautiful that Scott's looking after it. It's gone to uh, loving hands, and uh, the truck was restored quite a long time ago. But Scott, tell us a little bit about the truck or whatever else you'd like to share with us regarding that. Yeah, originally Chris Bazzuti. Everyone knows Chris. You know, pure gentleman, and you know, everyone loved him. The truck never went to work dirty. He washed it every night and all that. Then, um, yeah, six years ago, he pulled into the depot and not feeling real, real um, fit. Real, real flash. Yeah, and the boys, like said, you better go home, mate. And yes, he uh, he went out, and unhooked the trailer, collapsed a couple of times unhooking the trailer, climbed up into it yeah. to take off and he yeah. just collapsed over the wheel and then the truck took off and went through a fence, hit a car and yeah, that was the end of him. It just goes to show the resilience um, of Chris to collapse at work. Obviously, got up again and then got back up into the truck again. And he didn't. He didn't want to stay down, did he? No, he didn't want to stay down. No, no, no. He owned this truck for 28 years. Well, on the happy side of the vehicle, we've got. Let me take a guess. Has it got a 350? No, 400 big cam three. It's got a 400. All right. What about a 15-speed Road Ranger? Yeah, it's a 15. Okay, we've got that right. With That's good. Three double fives on Hendrix. <laughs> oh, three fives. Yep. Oh, so she's nice and tall. Oh, yeah, she gets along all yeah, right. Yeah, yeah, I, I reckon she I don't mind would. blowing the cobwebs out of her either. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's so good, Scott. Beautiful truck, 1984 colours as well, right? Yep. Yeah, isn't that nice? Now, what was its uh, its history? It was a day cab, right? Originally a day cab, uh, yeah, TNT spec truck back in its day yeah um, yeah it's beautiful scott that you've got this 1984 w923 kenworth here in all its glory i'm sure chris is looking down mate and saying oh, yeah. take care of my bloody truck oh yeah we often sit in the shed of a night and have a rum and yeah. talk a lot of people travel big distances to get to this show don't they oh my ass they do yeah queensland melbourne yeah you know, yeah like it's a credit to the cost boys, you know, the yeah. amount of stuff that they bring yeah. up for it. And That's the thing too, a bit of a mention there for Justin and Turk Kloss. Now they're, uh, they're they're no strangers to classic restos. Yep. They've been on the show before. Yep. And um, the work that those boys do, absolutely fantastic. Talk about the bling bling, the shiny department. <laughs> they've, they've got that down pat, haven't they? Oh, my ass, they have. Yeah, yep. yeah. Yep. All right. Okay, Scott. Thank you, Fletch. Take care of yourself, mate. Yep. And I really appreciate the fact that you're looking after Chris's truck. Oh, and doing my mighty best. I know it's going to stay with you for a long time. Oh, it is. Yeah, my young bloke, like he's only 12, but I'm not allowed to sell it. It'll be around for a long time, mate. It will be, yep. Thanks, buddy. No worries. Thank you. So here we are at the Clarendon Classic out here at um, 2022. Kenworth Classic is what we run, which is part of the event. We've got young Jaden here. And Jaden's a truck nut. Chapo's firing up the old T900. He's about to take it for a run. This is what we do here. It's all about family. It's always a pleasure to catch up with this guy, Bruce Gunter. How are you, Bruce? G'day, Fletch. How are you, mate? Good, nice mate. Nice to see you Great. again. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, huge event for 2022. Record number of trucks. Absolutely, yeah. We had well over 400. 
uh, which was uh, the biggest year that we've ever had for it. Yeah, that is fantastic. It's it's a lot of anxiety. It's uh, starting for next year's event, organising it as of tomorrow. It's so much. taking a year, yes. uh, as every event organiser well knows. Um, it's a bit of an extra special year uh, because the truck that you're, we're leaning on here is your recently restored truck. Yes. I know that it's consumed a lot of your life and time for a long, long time. Mm -hmm. It's also got uh, a very interesting history. Absolutely. Um, now, before we go any further, I don't want to give too much away because down the track, I want to do a feature on Classic Restos about Bruce and his truck. So today is just a bit of a toe in the water. So just give us a quick rundown, Brucey. A quick, I never give a quick rundown, Fletch. But uh, look, it, I was a little kid when I first saw this truck. Um, I got to know the owner. Uh, he was a lovely guy to me. He's probably my greatest inspiration for what we do with old trucks. And uh, just because he was a gentleman, like so many people in the transport industry. And uh, for me, I went looking for it eventually and I found it. And unfortunately, I'm extremely anal and pedantic. I've restored vehicles, cars in the past, and I just wanted to do this truck as it came off the showroom floor and it went from there. And we managed to debut it here on Friday with the original owner here who's 87 years old and I drove it in for the first time and it's just been very surreal. How special is that? Not only that, the original owner, just he just doesn't live a couple of streets away, does he? No. So tell us where the original owner is, Bruce. At, at 65, he moved to America to drive trucks for 12 months before he retired and he stayed there for 22 years driving and he's 87 and he's still driving trucks all over the 48 states. He's a legend. All right. He's a legend and high, very highly regarded as I found with everyone I spoke to in the industry when they knew I was doing this truck up, yep. they wouldn't just say, I remember this truck, but they'd all remember the man and yeah, say, what a yeah, gentleman. So yeah. it's a very lovely thing. All right, Bruce, well, okay, first of all, congratulations on an uh, epic year uh, for this huge three-day event, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Love to see this fraternity get together. You guys do it so well. Um, huge year, and I'll be looking forward to down the track doing a, more of a uh, up-close and personal feature yep, uh, sure. with you and the truck. And now we have the opportunity to catch up with Max, right? He's exactly right. Yep, yeah, he's here for the event with all of his family. Yep. And yeah, I know he'll be busted to sit and talk to you. All right. He's we'll a very proud man. Thank you very much, Brucey. We'll catch up. Pleasure. Thank you, Fletch, and thanks so much for all you do. You're welcome, mate. My pleasure. All Thank you. Thank you. It doesn't get much better than this. The original owner of the truck that Bruce has just restored. How are you, Max? Yeah, really good. And great to be here for this occasion uh, because of Bruce has just done so much uh, with this truck. My name is splashed all over it, just like it was when it was brand new. But it's Bruce's, Bruce, yeah, his work that's made it like this. Yeah. And you, uh, you've flown out from the United States of America pretty, pretty well just for this, so it's obviously special for you as well, Max. It is special for me in recognition of what Bruce has done. Yeah. That, that, that's, the, that's the reason yeah. of it, you know. And, he's, and being a perfectionist, and when you do a restoration, you have to be that way, uh, no bolt unturned, and yeah. it's, a, it's, a, it's a beautiful job. What was the truck like back in the day? When you bought this back in 1978, yep. what was it like to drive... Uh, and own a brand new Kenworth. Look, it was fantastic. It was a dream for me because uh, I started off with an R, a 1954 R180 International a petrol a petrol engine, uh, two-speed rear end. You know, and uh, it was painted in Goodyear colours. What's why I've kept these colours through the trucks that I've had. Yeah. And I saw a truck, a Kenworth, come up behind me one day and. Uh, coming towards uh, Maroolan with a slope on it. Traffic went past and this Kenworth just pulled out, one of the ancestors I reckon, and he just pulled up passing me and he was changing up gears. <laughs> so I said to myself, oh, you little Max, one of these days yeah. I'm going to get yeah. one of those. You've got to get one of them. And this was the dream come true. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Real. And I think that the history that Bruce has got, when when he was a, a kid, yep. back, well back in the 70s, yep. he used to watch you drive this truck. You used to I, get, you used to go I near came, his house or something. Yep. I came down to the cricket ground to play cricket. I played cricket for many years. Came down there, and occasionally I'd drive the truck down, a truck down there, uh, earlier trucks, a, a little Scania, and a couple of things. But one day I arrived with this, and uh, when it must have been pretty new. And Bruce said, you know, that he was inspired by that. And he just, we used to talk a little bit. He was only a boy and, you know, honked the horn for him and changed all the gears going away. And Max, it's been absolutely fantastic catching up with you. Thank yeah. you so much right to, be, to be standing in the front 
of the truck that's been restored that used to be yours, brand new, back in 1978. That's even special for me. Good, yes. No, look, it's a special time. And as I say, yep, that it used to be mine once upon a time, but it's the hard work that Bruce Gunter has put into it that's made all this happen. Yeah, it's just what he's done. Yeah. His enthusiasm from the time he was an eight-year-old boy yeah, yeah. is stuck with him. Yeah, yeah. And this is what is yeah, the yeah. results. The cream always rises to the top, Max. There you go. Yeah, there you <laughs> true, go. true. Right. Cheers, mate. You take care of yourself. Right, Fletch. All right. And thanks for having a talk with us. That's all right. My pleasure. Good. Like Dad, I've always been a Ford man. The Falcon Squire wagon was unloved in 1964, but turns heads today. The Americans call them woodies, but the panelling, it's just fibreglass and plastic. But it's a passion that Shannon's understands, which is why my Fords are insured with Shannon's. And now, so's the home. Call Shannon's on 13 46 46. Shannon's, insurance for motoring enthusiasts. They may not be making the classic Holden anymore, but the legacy lives on. You can still have a Holden certified service using genuine Holden and AC Delco quality parts at over 180 centres across Australia. Go to holden.com.au to find your nearest centre. Book your Holden in, maintain the pride. And of course, if you own a classic, it just has to be insured with Shannon's. Why not pick up the phone to give Shannon's a call for a quote and a chat on 134646 and the Shannon's Club awaits you. For more information, visit shannons.com.au. And now it's time for Chapo on today's show. How are you, Chapo? Oh, uh, good, Fletch. Lost the voice again, mate. Sorry. <laughs> but we'll do our best again, eh, hey, mate? Uh, this guy here has probably worked on pretty well every Kenworth in the paddock, I reckon. No, nah, not all of them, only three quarters, mate. <laughs> but I know everyone who owns them, mate. Of course, with your mechanical business, Northwest Trucks, out there, Riverstone, right? Yeah, that's it, mate, yeah. yeah. Um, How many years you been in the game, Chapo? Uh, 15 I started, yeah. working on Kenworths, and I'm nearly no, 16. 1915. 1915, Fletch. <laughs> <laughs> it's been a long time. Live longer than the Queen, mate. He looks good. He looks good. I can't believe that this trucking fraternity, how how close you guys are, um, and even with yourself, it really it really becomes your life, doesn't it? Oh, it is my life, mate. As you can see, all the trucks I've got here, everyone knows I'm crazy. But, you know, so many great blokes here, mate, and women. You know, it's just fantastic, mate. Absolutely. Unbelievable. And some of the great associations, even at my level, of knowing these people, it's an absolute privilege um, to, to know some of you, to hear the stories and uh, the history of you guys and what you all stand for. You know, it just means so much. Now, the truck we're standing in front of, I know, means a lot to you. Sure does. There's a lot of history uh, with you and this truck, Chapo. Sure is, you much. might want to share that with us. Well, this was the original truck we learned how to drive road trains with Dawn Darwin. It's Shaw's Transport. Um, I was a foreman at Kenworth when um, the truck was transferred from Sydney to Newcastle and delivered to Will Shaw. And Will Shaw, like everyone knows now, is a massive road train operator. He our branch closed down in Sydney, so I started my own business back in probably 1982. We just happened to be behind short, uh, Darwin, TNT Darwin Express, who Will carded for to Darwin. The end of an era for me at Kenworth and the start of a new era, we started driving road trains to Darwin on weekends. We've got a lot of our mates here today that started with us back then. We were probably uh, three or four in the lineup of Shaw's drivers. Yeah. I only had two trucks. What was it like back then? Was it fairly intimidating, a bit scary at first to, to go that distance with the road trains? Not wrong there, mate. Yeah, well, we were mechanics, so we weren't truck drivers at all. I had one truck. Um, we used to cart really heavy with that truck around Sydney with scrap metal. So we had a little bit of an idea how to drive heavy, but and start you know, pulling doubles and triples with this truck behind us. Yeah, that got it all working inside your guts, mate, I tell you. Yeah, a little bit of movement on the steering wheel, and as you know, like road train drivers all know, it doesn't take much to start flicking that back trailer around. When this truck turned up here, and the old mate who owns it said, I think you used to drive this truck. And I said, mate, I'm a mechanic, I don't drive trucks. And he said, 
Mate, I'm pretty sure I used to drive this thing. I could not believe it was the original truck from Shaw's Transport. And yeah, it nearly brought a tear to me eye and it's pretty hard to do that to me, I'll tell you. They're great memories, Trapo, they really are. Well, look, time's up. Um, yeah. For the episode, it's been a, a big day and yeah. uh, I know that this show means a lot to many people, yeah. uh, particularly yourself and Bruce. Yeah. Um, it was fantastic catching up with you, Chapo. It's great you're coming out, Fletch. We love your work, mate. And I always say that, but we really do. So, mate, keep it up, mate. And maybe another 10 years, we're still doing it, mate, hopefully. It's been 15 years now. Oh, yeah, I know you've been doing a long time. <laughs> and with my old Tiranas, I've been watching Flex for a long time. <laughs> all right, Chapo. Yeah, thanks a lot. Cheers, mate. Good right, on you, buddy. Mate. I really appreciate you coming out, That's mate. Right. Thank That's you, right. mate. It's my pleasure. It's my pleasure having you, mate. Thank you. <laughs> thanks, mate. Well, there you have it, just some of the Kenworth Classic here at Clarendon, New South Wales for 2022. And as I said earlier, this episode is just a toe in the water. This event is just so big. And if you can come to Clarendon in 2023, it'll be well worth your while. Until next week, no matter where you're watching Classic Restos from, please ride and drive safe. I'm Fletch, and I thank you very much for watching. You can like and follow us on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash classic restos TV and watch catch up episodes at shannons.com.au. Classic Restos is proudly brought to you by Shannons, where you can sign up to be a member of the Shannons Club, your local Holden certified service centre, Pace Farm the Enjoyable Egg, and Heron Forbes Machinery House, where you can buy online.